what's it like to be on the Corona Island? We tried to get things delivered, but that was extremely difficult. And it's really sad watching other countries and other places all opening up and, and we're still sat here in the same situation. Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in this week. Um, this week we're going to be doing a slightly different style of video um, where we're going to be talking through our travel experiences so far and our decision making processes along the way. The reason we're doing this this week is because we get a lot of questions from all of you asking us um, why we chose to stay living in Tallinn, Estonia during the pandemic um, and how we've come to that decision, um, what our plans are uh, going forward. And that. So we just thought if we just do this one video, we can address all of those questions and also just to kind of give you an insight into what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, we have family uh, based obviously in England, where we're from. Uh, and for those of you who are new to our channel, by the way, <laughs> we are originally from England and we're a couple who got married in 2018. Once we got married, we decided we didn't want a regular honeymoon. We wanted to go and travel the world together. So, yeah. <laughs> so we saved up. That's um, a great plan. Yeah, yeah, great. All, all these great plans. Yeah. So we saved up um, our money and we quit our jobs and we gave up our home, um, packed up our house. And on the 1st of March 2020, we set off to travel the world. Um, first couple of weeks were fantastic. We had a great time. Um, and then sadly our plans got a bit scuppered. So as you now know, the pandemic hit and that changed things a lot for us. <laughs> Absolutely. So we had planned to leave Riga and drive to Tallinn on the 17th of March to, after having two nights in Riga. Luckily for us, that just happened to be the very date that they announced they were going to close the borders. So we were thanking our lucky stars at that point that we were going to drive over just in time before the border closed and be able to deliver our uh, hire car to Tallinn as originally planned. As agreed. So that was great. However, it really made us re reassess our entire situation and our ongoing travels. Hence, when we finally crossed the border into Tallinn, Estonia, we had a little wander around and decided to cancel everything going on from there. So all of our travels that we had planned going on from there, we were going to go to Finland. We decided at this point, no, let's grind everything to a halt. Everything's going to be closed anyway. Yeah. So, so even though we, we had the option to take the ferry over to Finland, we just thought we didn't really see any value in continuing to travel during this time when everything's a ghost town anyway. And also we weren't so worried about our own safety and catching it because, you know, we were aware that we're young and, and healthy and everything. But it's more just why be another person that could potentially carry it and spread it at a time when everything's going into lockdown for a reason. So that was our reason initially for why we chose to stay in Tallinn. As time went on, gradually the rest of the world was completely closing down and we had a lot of um, family and friends back in England who were starting to message us and seemed really worried. They were suggesting that we maybe come back to England, um, but we were quite aware of what we had in Tallinn at that point and how they had handled we it. We were there, we were seeing it mm -hmm. firsthand and how Estonia were dealing with things. Mm -hmm. So so we knew, we were seeing it obviously through our, uh, firsthand through our own eyes. Yeah. And that's completely understandable that um, friends and family back home were concerned. It's, it's just like a natural human reaction that when things go wrong, you head for home mm -hmm. and that's that natural thing. And of course, something within us felt that too, but like I say, we had information available to us that other people didn't realise about us, i.e. we'd already given up our jobs and our home and everything, and we were already on this journey. And actually, the same reasons we didn't want to continue our travels onto Finland and to the rest of our travels, for those same reasons, we also didn't want to travel back to England because we deemed that as unnecessary travel. So the only viable places we had to stay if we went back to the UK were either of our parents who are vulnerable yeah. um, so for us that wasn't a good idea yeah the main reason we decided to stay living in Tallinn Estonia was that Estonia were handling the pandemic so well they closed down early obviously it's a smaller population in Estonia than in England so by law of average there's going to be lower numbers we had a direct comparison yeah, yeah yeah we were speaking to friends and family back home and seeing reports um, of the uk and of, of the usa we're now just going to go through and discuss a quick video 
just to give an example of exactly how they dealt with the situation. No one can leave for the mainland and no one can come in. Approximately one half of the island population is infected. The infection with the capital is one of the highest in Europe, if not in the world. What's it like to be on the Corona Island? This is Saramar, an island off the coast of Estonia, and about 33,000 people live there. What happened a month ago, a team from Milan flew to play volleyball on the island, and now it's the country's coronavirus hotspot. We can't get there. So some of the islanders filmed on their mobiles what it's like coping there now. So just to recap, this was in the middle of April, so it was in the midst of the pandemic when infections were, were rife um, around, certainly Europe was getting hit hard. Um, and this was a BBC report, so when it came out and our friends and family Sorry. got wind of it, um, understandably they were very concerned. Yeah, and what we pointed out to them is this is an island that's actually separate to the mainland and also we had been experiencing how well Estonia and the government were coping with everything. And people adapt to change. For example, my hairdresser is now uh, the one uh, labelling the packages in a local uh, meat factory and uh, nobody's sitting at home and thinking that, OK, let's see what tomorrow brings. Uh, people are taking actions. Anne Vores is part of the island's crisis centre. They're considering the next steps in a video conference. Anu tells us they've been through isolation like this before. For the very first time since Soviet occupation, people need permits to enter. But this time it is uh, because of our free will to protect our people and their health. I'm a bit worried about the longer term implications, of course. And what I've seen so far, how the people are getting together to kind of work for the future of the island, I'm really, really positively surprised. So that was a BBC News report on what happened here in Estonia on the island of Sarama. And now we're going to show you the Euronews report of how they handled it and how they emerged from lockdown from that. On the Estonian island of Saarema, a return to something that looks like normal. Competitive volleyball on the beaches, a public wine festival, and people enjoying the glorious summer weather. Yet this was the place two months ago where as many as half of the island's residents were believed to have been infected with coronavirus, giving it one of the highest rates per capita in the world. The island's mayor, Madis Kalas, took political responsibility and resigned over the outbreak, but he believes his former administration largely got things right. Apart from one decision where we held volleyball competitions and other big events in the first half of March, he says that when it comes to our actions in crisis management, I can say that I would not have done anything differently in this area. Sar MR managed the crisis pretty well. The situation required drastic measures, which is why the authorities took the swift decision to put the entire island under quarantine. Everyone was asked to stay at home and to keep away from the Estonian mainland. Being united as a community and following strict quarantine, Sarem Island moved from being the epicenter of coronavirus to now becoming one of the most virus-free places in Estonia. Janis Lysans, Euronews. So at the time, Sarema had one of the highest infection rates per capita, certainly in Europe, if not the world. Um, but they, they took that decision quickly to isolate the island from the mainland. Yeah, seeing how the government handled that entire situation is just an example of how quick they were to react to things, just like that they were quick to react in the first place to uh, close the borders down and close everything back on the 17th of March. So that just strengthened our view of the way that they're handling things here. We have the direct comparison with um, the UK and the US because we have family in both of those countries. Um, and what we're actually going to do is we're going to just talk to um, a family member in each of those countries and just ask them a few basic questions before we give you a comparison and ask ourselves the same questions from our experience here in Estonia. Um, so now we're just going to call my mum, who's in London in the UK. Um, she's got a few questions um, that we're just going to go through with her. 
Hello, how are you? Hello. I'm fine, thank you. Yeah, we're good, thank you. So yeah, we're just going to ask you a few, a few questions about how things have been throughout the pandemic. Yes. So what date did the UK go into lockdown? Well, Boris announced it on the 23rd of March, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, it, it happened really um, quite quickly. I think we knew more or less, I mean, watch TV, it was going to happen. What did lockdown look like from the start? Well, we weren't allowed to um, go out, obviously. Um, all the shops and everything closed. It was just essential um, stores and things that were left open, supermarkets and so on. Otherwise, um, yeah, everything closed. It was vital services that, that were allowed to, to keep uh, running. Yeah. Um, we weren't advised to wear masks or anything. Um, I think the government thought we'd more likely spread the virus touching them after we'd worn them or during wearing them. Um, and also, they were very hard to get hold of. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, things like that. Everything became very difficult. Even in the supermarkets, you couldn't get a lot of things. They were not available. Um, and there was all queues outside supermarkets, uh, people were panic buying, so there was a lot of food, you know, all the basics, pasta and rice and things were not there. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we were allowed an hour's exercise every day. Yeah. People were walking from their homes and um, running and cycling, and people were just out exercising locally. Uh, um, in fact, that was a nice thing, you've got a lot of people out on the streets. Yeah. More than okay. Usual. And what were your main concerns, personally, during the lockdown and the changes? Well, for me, it was really food and getting hold of food. You started to feel yeah. that it was in short supply. Um, you've got a queue at the supermarkets and you weren't sure whether they'd be wearing masks or they'd have any screens or anything. Mm. So you weren't keen to go. You'd got a queue, it was two metres apart outside, but you still weren't keen. Um, and of course, when you got there, then you probably couldn't find anything that you wanted on the shelves anyway. Um, yeah. We did have we did have things, but there were a lot of basics that just weren't there because they been people have been bulk buying, you know, people yeah. have been stock stockpiling. There's certainly no toilet rolls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think the. Uh, Don't ask me why. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was all bought up. Everyone wanted toilet rolls. Um, so yeah, did you have to get things delivered? How did you get? We it. tried to get things delivered, but that was extremely difficult. Um, if we were lucky enough, I mean, that was really the thing that the slots were left for the supposed to be left for the vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, it was really difficult. You might get the odd delivery if you stayed up till the odd early hours, or you might get the odd click and collect slot. Um, but it was really hard to get hold of them. You'd have to keep on the you know computer to try and get something like that. What's the situation looking like now? Um, well, it's a lot. It's a lot better in, in that those who want to go out can, you know, and I think after three months or more of lockdown, people are glad to get out. They're glad to, you know, go places. So now that pubs, mm -hmm. restaurants, bars and places like that are open, um, it's a lot better. And of course, the places that have opened have got all the shielding now in place. They've mm -hmm. got all the visors and all the equipment. And they're also restricting numbers uh, and making sure you're spaced spaced out man yeah. <laughs> so was it just it was just this yeah. week that everything was opened wasn't it in the uk yes yes um really it was on saturday the fourth that everything the, opened yeah. saturday the fourth of um, july. july yes yeah it's very hard to know but i think most people are expecting a second spike even if it doesn't really? come until the autumn yeah. but uh, at the moment mm -hmm. yeah it's just local they're finding now that if if there's a um a case they're trying to trace, you know, everybody who's been Quickly. in touch and they're just trying to lock down locally mm -hmm. so that we'll just keep it confined, which I believe they, you know, need to do a lot earlier, but what do yeah. you know? yeah. That leads us on to the, the final question. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know. So do you think the UK locked down at the right time? I personally felt no. I, I felt uh, it, it would have been uh, a good idea to have locked down sooner and certainly more localised, um, yeah, when they had the first cases. But, you know, I appreciate that's not always possible, so uh, I'm sure they had lots of, of reasons not to. Okay. Thank you so much for answering the questions. Yeah, thanks for answering we'll all the questions, Mum. Yeah. Okay. Love care. you lots. Take Bye. care. Bye. 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 So that was the situation 
uh, in London based on Craig's mum's <laughs> experience of it. Yeah. Now we're going to speak to Craig's sister, who is in Houston, Texas, in the USA. We're going to ask her the same questions that we did of um, Craig's mum in uh, London, in the UK, and just see the difference there, because we've seen different reports, and it's just going to be good to get her opinion on how things have gone there. So right, over we go to the Wild West. <laughs> <laughs> over to the USA. Hello. Oh, hi sis, how are you doing? Hi. Hi. You okay, how's things in Houston? Hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just wanted to ask you a few questions about the pandemic and lockdown. So yeah, first one, as you know, what date did you go into lockdown in Houston? Okay, so um, uh, the actual stay at home uh, order was from the 24th of March to the 30th of April. Okay. Um, but lockdown started a bit, a bit earlier for us because school actually finished on Friday the 13th of March. So obviously the, the US government um, uh, is one thing, but then we have the Texas government, the state um, governors, and then we yeah. have like the local Houston city um, okay. governors. And there's been quite a lot of conflict in opinions and mask orders and fines and yeah different people's thoughts it's actually turned quite political here as well yeah so in terms of what lockdown looked like for you um what measures were put in place uh, yeah so it was a, a stay at home work safe order which they put in place so basically a lot of the um, businesses were closed and everybody was sent home if you could work from home um, that was good. So the kids were in like full time virtual school. Shops were out of things. There was a lot of demand, like um, back home in the UK and, and globally, I guess. Um, and Did it you... was hard to get delivery slots and things like that initially. So you didn't go to the shops? No, no I, we didn't. We, we no. Took, made the decision that we were going to stay home if we could. So I used a, a company that has an app and, and you can order online and they'll deliver it to the house. So I did that initially. And then when I was able to, when things relaxed a bit more and I was able to get um, slots for um, curbside pickup, they call it here, then I, then I started doing that. We've got Harley, so we were out walking a couple of times a day. We did notice living near Memorial Park that the park was super busy. So it went from being really, really quiet from around where we lived to just almost having to dodge everybody yeah. on your wow. crew. After school activities, they all went virtual. So Isla's dance school did um, weekly virtual classes and did like online videos that she could do and things and Evan's soccer um, was a virtual class twice a week so oh, wow. every, everything went virtual yeah. everything <laughs> went digital yeah what's the current situation the looking like now then so you do have to wear masks now you don't what's the yeah so so everything opened up um after the 30th of April, they did do it gradually, but initially I think restaurants were only allowed to open at 25% for, um, for dine-in customers. Okay. Um, and then it was up to 50, and then it was up, to, I think, to full capacity because now they've taken it down. Or well, maybe it was only up to 75%, but it was up again, but now it's back down to 50% because numbers here are um, spiking, peaking. Uh, looking at the figures, like... Um, when they locked down, it was pretty. It, it was quite early on, and so the numbers were quite low. But I think um, with the end of last week or something, we were getting like eight thousand cases a day. Yeah. So it's wow. it's like tripled, quadrupled. It's it's pretty bad um, numbers okay. wise at the moment. That leads us to the final question. And do you think um, that Houston? Texas locked down at the right time? Uh, I think they did. The rulings they put in place and the disagreements between the US government, the Texas government and the local government, they've been disagreeing on mask orders and things like that. So okay. initially it was like, you should wear a mask by the local, like Houston city. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the Texas government disagreed with them. And, and said, no, we can't fine you. But the mask order they have brought in, and initially they were only fining businesses. So if you went into a store and you didn't have a mask on, they could fine 
the, the shop. Um, but now they've actually bought in a two hundred and fifty dollar fine for to the individual. Oh wow! Which I think um, will help. Uh, but there's still a lot of people who wow. are protesting for their independence and saying it's their right that they shouldn't have to wear a mask. And oh really? There's a lot of people that are saying that this is um, against their not rights real mm. and all that kind of thing. So it then becomes a bit messy. But yes. Yeah, um, Carl's company opened for two weeks and now have closed down again and gone back to virtual working. Until numbers come back down again, I mean, we're on the red warning, is it number one? So, oh, really? Numbers are really high again. One. Yeah, numbers are really high again here. Yeah. And it's really sad watching other countries and other um, places all opening up and, and we're still sat here in the same situation. It's quite scary. Um, yeah. Well, thank you very much for answering. Yeah, thank you so yeah. much for your time. Really Thanks. appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. All right. okay. Lots of Bye. love. Bye. Take care, sis. Bye. Love you. Bye. <laughs> to pick up where we left off late last night, speaking to my sister in the States, um, the main point that kind of came from that conversation was it sounded like there was a bit of a, a hierarchy struggle, potentially. Um, different ideas and different opinions uh, from the leaders of, of the states in the country and from um, the UK, from my mum's perspective. The, the feel there is that there just wasn't enough measures put in place early enough and just not enough measures being adhered to by everyone in the UK as we saw from all the rushing around and the panic buying and everything. Um, so now we're going to ask ourselves those same five questions based on our experience here in Estonia. So, of course, the first one, what date did we lock down? We know that one very well because <laughs> we arrived here that day and that was the 17th of March, um, which in terms of Europe was pretty early on, pretty quick uh, reactions. And um, it was way ahead of the, the UK, which is why our thoughts were feeling like we were in the future of where they were back home. It was about a week to 10, to ten days mm -hmm. before the UK lockdown. And then the second question of what lockdown looked like. Um, well, like we say, everything was so peaceful and calm. The majority of people were adhering to the rules um, and supermarkets were quiet, well stocked. Um, and it was, yeah, it just felt like a great place to be. Um, our main concerns were, of course, <laughs> Um, how are our families back in the UK and what's our next choice? And actually the trickiest thing for us was where to live. We, we figured it out. We, we managed to, to get to that mind. Yeah, goal. it was speculation that Airbnbs may even be stopped altogether. Yeah. So with the hostel closing down and then Airbnbs and that being a rumour, that was a bit concerning for us. What does the country look like now? Um, it's completely out of lockdown and has been since the 17th of May. So... It was a solid two months, 17th of May. They then slowly came out of lockdown. Everything, again, was really uh, well handled. There was the two metre stickers everywhere and, and supermarkets and shopping malls. And what it felt like in the Baltic states was that let's nip this in the bud mm -hmm. while it's winter. And then by the time summer comes around, everyone will be free again, hopefully, yeah. and we'll come out of lockdown. And that, so far, touch wood, is what's happened. Yeah, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, we're very aware that things can change. But this is just our opinion and this is just what we have seen uh, comparing it to uh, the UK and the USA because they're our main comparisons that we have with our closest friends and family. Did this country lock down at the correct time, in our opinion? We both strongly yes, agree. They did. Yes, yeah. we think they did. And again, that's comparing it to to what we have seen and heard. We had to just base our opinions on the, the factors that were affecting us in our lives and that was what's happening right here where we are and what's happening in our in our home country which is the UK. We have one final question that we keep getting asked and we would love to know the answer ourselves. <laughs> when will we continue our world travels? Um, we're not the 100% main, The main sure. word is uncertainty and everyone's going through it yeah. but that is kind of sums up our, our situation, uncertainty. Yes. We do not know. We don't. But what we do know for certain is that we're here, we're happy and we're healthy. Sure, we could carry on and we could get the boat over to Finland now, which was our original plan after two days in the country. But the world's changed and a lot of countries are going back into lockdown, like um, the Houston. The second waves. Yeah, yeah. and um, my friend in Melbourne, Australia, they're going back into lockdown. So we're just kind of trying to be sensible. We do hope to move on soon, but we'll be really sad when we do. Thank you so much for watching. Please give the video a like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. 
And don't forget to ring the bell so that you get a notification every time we load a new adventure, which we're about to do lots of. <laughs> See you later. Bye for now. Bye. Bye. Now I've learned it. <laughs> <laughs> Turn it up, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> what did it look down? Look, uh, what did lockdown look like from the start? <laughs> or what did lockdown look like? <laughs> <laughs> Kiddies, do you want to be in one of our videos? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's super cute. Aww. How how was lockdown for you two? It was okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we cool. play with our dog and swim in the pool so it's not been such a bad lockdown because we could do lots of other things. We got to get masks because masks were actually actually quite fun to go and get. Aww. And we got them at Gap. Oh, Gap. Cool. And did you enjoy not having to go to school or did you miss school? I miss, well, I kind of miss having, like, seeing all my teachers and my friends, but not so much the learning part. <laughs> what did Harley make of lockdown? <laughs> Harley said it was okay, but she didn't like us here because we're getting terrorized. <laughs> <laughs>